All right, shalom, everyone. Let's raise our hands to Father Yahweh. Father Yahweh, this is Kwanzaa Fine, the seat of the last day's witness, Israel Hawkins, the son of High Priest Yeshua Messiah, along with the great men of your Sabbath evening class here, giving you great thanks, Father, for the opportunity that you're giving us to have these great positions that you're offering us and to witness these tremendous events, these prophesied events as they occur and unfold in front of our eyes and to learn this teaching that will be taught forever as it's being taught and as it's being revealed for the first time in thousands of years and many of many of the things that we're learning have, have actually never been revealed and are only being revealed by Israel Hawkins in these last days. So we do thank you for this. We pray to recognize this opportunity and, and to take full hold of it and to grasp it knowing that this is the greatest opportunity offered to mankind ever. And we do thank you for this. We do pray for the sick that they're healed. We pray for the a message that it does continue to go out, that the captives, that they're set free and that they're being held in uh, many cases by these uh, wicked men who don't like our message. And so this is how they want to stop the message, by basically violence against us in different ways. And we do pray, Father, for protection and your continued protection always from these things, and, and we know that that protection comes from um, our keeping of your laws. So we do pray to do that always in Yeshua Messiah's name. Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. Okay, please be seated. Now we're in the 11th book of Israel. We're going to part one. And, uh, the, you know, these books really are, are going to be used for teaching uh, the universe for all times. And, and they, they're, they're, I think, a lot more important than most people realize. Um, I, I've personally come to look at them as, in, in some ways, more important than Scripture, in that I, I look at, I would almost rather have learned the books of Israel first than looked in Scripture, because it's like that's really the way it's supposed to be done, because it's, anything I know about Scripture ahead of time was, was um, corrupted by the Catholic Church, which I originally was born into and, and raised into. But these books are going to be the key for eternal life for everyone throughout the universe forever and we're here witnessing them being first published and and able to first learn them and um so that's a tremendous opportunity for us but let's let's turn over uh real quick we're going to start we're not going to start at the very beginning because we don't have time we're going to start on page 43 and we're going to be in chapter 4 page 43 and this is two witnesses chapter 4 famous prophecies that scholars have struggled over the centuries, who is this man? Number 21, the last day's house of Yahweh will be the first of the priesthood who will be given the power over death, which is the power uh, to resurrect and the power to to both bring back from the dead and the power to keep from dying in the first place. And this is what you're going to see. Uh, you're going to actually witness this yourself if you stay in this house in these last days. And there's nothing that's going to compare to this. And actually have an opportunity to participate in this and, and know how to do it, actually, to know how to resurrect the dead and be part of the group that does that. Now, verse 19, Pastor starts off um, on verse 19 here. I'm skipping ahead. But you know how hard it is for you to get off your can in the morning on Sabbath morning and come serve in Yahweh's house. Try to get somebody to do that, and you'll know what I've been going through. And, and this is true. I think most of us that have dealt with any type of work situation know that it's harder to get someone else to do something than it is to get yourself to do something. And, and we know the saying, um, you know, if you want something right, you better do it yourself. But, but that isn't really what we're learning. <laughs> we're le we've got to learn how to get others to do it too, because that's really the way the kingdom's going to work. And you can only do so much yourself. And uh, so th this is really a big part of it. And, and so we can watch how pastor does this, because Yahweh said he's going to do the greatest work on the planet earth and so how he does it is how we're going to do it in the future try to prepare for two billion people where would you start where would you start planning for two billion people and here people are saying all kinds of bad things about you every step you make telling all kinds of lies about you somebody asked me why don't you retire i said i've retired to do the work of yahweh and the pastor really didn't retire not like the world retires but, but this is um, what they want. They, they actually are hoping for him to die so that they can come in and cause the house of Yahweh to go away. But that's not what the prophecies say, and they don't see that. But, but it's them that's going to die if they don't repent and keep Yahweh's laws. And then we're going to take over the world. That's what the prophecies show. So they've kind of got this all backwards and they're waiting for the wrong thing, but they can keep waiting, and they're going to see this occur, and then they're going to be 
uh, gnashing their teeth because they missed out, many of them, on this great opportunity that they were given. And I think a lot of them know it, and this is why they, they're, they're so angry. It's like they know they've given this stuff up. Now, pastor talks about how they, they, they say all kinds of things, telling all kinds of lies about you. And a few months ago, we were, or a few years ago, we were dealing with the CMS, Child Molestation Services, CPS. And these are one of the ones that the Catholic Church has used for years, for millennium, to attack the called out ones of the house of Yahweh. And what they do is they lie, and they lie using children as props, because this is particularly effective means of propaganda. And, and the state of Texas itself uses um, CPS to go against religions they don't like. And this has been playing out in the media for decades. But what occurred uh, this last few weeks, which was really interesting, is that CPS itself is now under investigation for felony fabricating of evidence. And, um, and this is a real big story because this almost never occurs. Uh, you know, they get away with this. I've watched them personally. These are some of the people that lie against us. I've watched them openly lie and actually smirk while they're lying. They're so confident that the system is not going to go after them, but apparently they lied to the wrong man and they lied about the wrong thing. And so now four, uh, three of them at least are under this investigation. I just want to read you a couple of these stories because this is, this is kind of part of how this system is going to come crumbling down. They're, they're lies against us. They've, they also tell these same lies against other people. It isn't just us, but we're getting persecuted for righteousness' sake. The rest of the world is just getting oppressed. But um, the, this is from the Houston Chronicle. Now, these are the people that lie about us, and we've been saying this, but you might have a tendency to think, well, they're saying they're lying, the other side says you're lying. No, these people lie for a living. Police investigators seized computers, cell phones, and files from Texas Child Protective Services offices in Abilene on Tuesday as part of a widening probe into accusations that top officials directed workers to withhold child abuse files and photographs from law enforcement after the death of a child. The rare action, and this is extremely rare, against one of the state's largest agency comes, agencies comes six weeks after Abilene police discovered 22-month-old Tamron Klepke dead of dehydration and her two sisters barely alive inside a Dias Air Force Base home on August 28th. Now what it was is they were investigating these children. The children were clearly being abused. The um, CPS closed the case for unknown reasons. The police decided to investigate, and then they all clammed up, and they started hiding evidence. And according to the police, according to the, these news stories, they started fabricating and, and modifying evidence. Now, here's another story. And this is, these are the people now that, that they, they get... They, that this shows they're, they're themselves testifying in these stories about how they fabricate evidence and, and fabricate even affidavits. They call it fluffing the affidavit. And, and they do these things. Now, they also get children in there, and they take them by themselves, and they put them in a room, and they tell the children what to say. Now, we're supposed to believe now that these people aren't telling the children to lie or to tell them what they want them to say in order to get taken out of the house. And, I, and, and this, this is what they do. I have personal experience seeing them do this. Uh, Abilene, Texas, we're getting a better idea of what may be happening inside Abilene's CPS office from someone who used to work there. And this is really amazing because there's a lot of offices in Texas, CPS offices, and this is Abilene's office. And this is the one that we dealt with us. A former caseworker says she tried to alert the state to practices within the Abilene office, and now that caseworker is in the middle of a CPS investigation involving her own daughter. So this is how they work. She told about this problem a year ago, they fired her. A year later, they're investigating her for child abuse. This is how these people work. They use this against what they consider to be their enemies. They've always done it. This is a woman that works there. They just now got caught, says Joan Thomas. That's the explanation she gives after learning Abilene's Department of Family Protective Services is under criminal investigation. investigation. Thomas left her job as a CPS investigator a little over a year ago. At that time, Thomas says she wrote an email to her supervisor and state officials unveiling what she believed were bad practices within the Abilene office, including the false documentation of cases. These cases are used in courts and they're given to law enforcement agencies. Falsifying these documents is a felony. And they, this woman is saying they do it on a regular basis. I've personally seen it. They do it. 
and they do it openly and they do it with a smirk on their face. So I can go in and put in the documentation if I save the first screen, that's going to timestamp it, but I can go into the actual document and save that as many times as I want to save it so I can put something in the computer and make it look like I documented it on this date, but in actuality I didn't. So see, they even give her the techniques of how to, how to fabricate these documents, which is not easy if you've ever worked with people working with computers, telling them how to, how to um, phony up the documentation, take some training. It's like they have an actual internal legal policy on doing this. Tuesday, Abilene Police Chief Stan D Stanbridge announced his department is investigating three women, Bill Whitaker, Gretchen Denny, and Barbara McDaniel, for allegedly tampering with or fabricating evidence in the case of Tamron Klepke, the 22-month-old girl found dead from neglect inside a dais home. Her mother, Tiffany Klepke, now sits in Taylor County Jail. Fabricating or tampering with evidence, that's a felony, is something Thomas says would not un, was not uncommon within the CPS office, I, Abilene CPS office. I remember one particular supervisor, she wanted me to go out and do a removal. And I was like, I'm not removing these kids. Listen, there's no grounds for removal of these kids. And she said, yeah, you are. And I'll help you if you need me to fluff the affidavit. That's another phrase that you see. Everyone in the agency knows what you're talking about said Thomas. We want to reiterate that during the last month, Thomas has become the focus of a CPS investigation herself a year after sending that email about CPS. So fluffing the affidavit is called perjury. And this is what they do at CPS on a regular basis. Now we also, I got the affidavit for the search warrant, and here's just one paragraph out of it. And this is from uh, Ernest uh, Moscarelli, a peace officer under the law of Texas. And he says it is the belief of your affiant being him and hereby charges and accuses that Bit Whitaker, a female, and Gretchen Denny, a female, and Barbara McDaniel, a female, committed the offense of PC 37.09, tampering with evidence, third degree felony. And then it says here uh, on, on this other paragraph here, it says um, that, well, basically, I'll summarize this part, but basically they told their workers to not provide the evidence to, to the investigators. And then they took the evidence home, and, the evidence, and, and in that evidence was notes telling them not to reveal the evidence. They took that out, and then they returned the files. So they took that part out of the evidence, and then all these people started lying about this, and then they started breaking down under investigation, and that's what generated this, this search warrant. And uh, they, they searched the... Uh, CPS, local CPS, and now four people, including one from up north, which we've also dealt with, uh, has, is also now they're on emergency leave. Okay, and this is this is the types of people. This is part of the people that Pastor is talking about that lie against us. You know, and the, and they do this for a living, and they do it just like the Pastor has brought out about how they used to do this in the old days. They'd go against the Jews by saying, "There's a 12-year-old." girl or an eight-year-old girl and she walked down by that bridge and that's where the Jews are and now she's missing. This is how they work. Now let's go over quick to um, Revelation to uh, verse 36 on page um, 44. In Revelation 10, notice here, now verse 7, Revelation 10 says, he says, but in the days of the voice of the seventh Malik, when he will begin to sound the great secret of Yahweh, these secrets of Yahweh. Well, Daniel showed you some of those secrets of the two witnesses, how they would establish a work. Zechariah showed it. No one understood it. Isaiah saw it. The worldly scholars are still struggling to find out who these people are. Who are they? Who is this servant? Who is this branch? Well, some say it's Joshua ben Nun. No, he's been dead for a thousand years before this prophecy was written. But this has them gasping, grasping in the dark. And these are the scholars that write these commentaries, the Christian scholars that don't have, of course, the knowledge of the one sent. Verse 37, we're the only ones on the face of the earth, brethren, who know this pro these prophecies, and they're now being revealed to the world. Think about the miracle that that is. And, we're not, and it's not just the prophecies themselves that are being revealed, but it's the knowledge that underlies the prophecies. Because the, the, um, even the prophecies of nuclear war, you know, it's not just a prediction of the future, like who's going to win a, a horse race or something. It's tied to a cause and effect and is a reason for the nuclear war. And Yahweh's all tying this into a lesson so that we understand what caused it in the first place. Uh, verse 38, the great secret of Yahweh would be finished as he declared to his servants the prophets. Notice, as he declared. And th this, you want to 
focus that because uh, you want to circle that right there or make a note there as he declared because this is a um, it, it, it's a Hebrew word, but it's talking about being spoken from the mouth. Okay, and this is as he declared, meaning spoken from the mouth of the one sent. And you can tie that in. Uh, Pastor is emphasizing that for a reason. He says, "Notice as he declared, not not the." Uh, not things that are not declared, but as he declared by his servants, the prophets, I will have no work, most assuredly I will have a work other, no work other than the one that is prophesied for this time period. We're the last lamp, we're the olive tree. And, and the last lamp, remember, never went out. The westernmost lamp does not go out. And this is these people that want Pastor to retire, and now they want him to die. He's not, this work is going to continue when it's not going to die. I mean, this is going to be a major transition, of course. It's almost an unbelievable thing that mankind can live forever, but this is what Yahweh says in his scriptures. The, the, um, the, the Catholic Church teaches you will not surely die, but they don't teach eternal death. What, uh, eternal life, what they teach is that you die and then you float up and you go to heaven. So they kind of get, get the best of both lies there. They, they can pretend you're living even though everyone's dying. We're the branch spoken of by Yeshua himself as prophesied. The work, the scripture shows each play of the work in the time period. The work prophesied in the last days in Genesis 49.10 where everyone is fastened to the branch. Okay, now that, that's an important prophecy in Genesis 49.10. Actually, also Genesis 49 talks about the ones who are coming against us. But, but let's talk about this um, the um, the great secret because remember pastor has been bringing out this great secret about the firmament and how the firmament is uh, made up of these micro kingdoms and the micro kingdoms actually will respond to the commands of someone who is perfect and who has been given that authority by Yahweh and and let's just uh, go over quick to um, to Hebrews eleven three because as pastor said the whole book of Yahweh is really about us and and if it's not about us. It's about someone getting ready for us or someone, you know, Yeshua Messiah. You've got to think about this too. Yeshua Messiah had to go through the things that he went through in order to qualify to be Israel Hawkins' high priest. Okay, that's, the, that's his job. That's the main part of his job. And, and so that's how great a position Israel Hawkins had. There's all this setup had to be done and we had to have the perfect man and he had to be murdered by, by um, sinners. And, and that established this high priest so Israel Hawkins could then do this work. And this work is really yeah, Yeshua's work, main work himself. Not what he did back then so much as what he's going to do now. But let's go to Hebrews 11.3 real quick. As Pastor talks about this great secret that was revealed, which is about this firmament, which they're talking about global warming, which is a controversial topic in the world because global warming has been kind of um, hijacked by those who want to use it as an excuse for taxes. And so it's, it's a scientific discipline that's become politicized. And so you can, you can think, well, there is no global warming because you get people on one side saying there's none, you get people on the other side saying there is. You, know, you go outside and say, well, it's hot today, but you know, I remember hot days in the past. The only way you can really know this is to listen to the one sent, because he's the only one that knows whether there's global warming, and this is what the scriptures said. Yes, there's global warming, and then you can see it in the evidence around you, and uh, even in this latest storm that was off of New York, they had the beach coming up and going blocks into, into, the, into New Jersey there, which they haven't had before. It was mounds of sand. That's called the beach. The beach was actually moving in because of the global warming, and, and, and part of that is the rising tide. The problem is they want to solve it with taxes, which is not going to solve it. And then the, then the other side says, well, we don't want the taxes, and uh, so we don't believe in global warming because, you know, you guys are, are, are just trying to get taxes, and they have a point of view too. But, they, but this is the problem. You can't get knowledge this way because each side is going to fabricate whatever statistics they want. And even if they're not fabricating them, they're going to come up with them. There's so many statistics about weather that um, you, know, you, you, could, you could literally say there's a million records that could be broken with regards to weather every single day. You, know, you could have the high in Abilene, the high low, the low high, the most rain, the least rain, the most wind, the least wind. But the only way that you can know is by the scriptures as to what's going on, and then you can witness it. it it's actually becoming evident that the weather is, is uh, heavily messed up. But let's go to Hebrews 11.3. So don't get, don't get uh, locked into uh, the political angle of these 
scriptural truths because it will um, sidetrack you and, 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 and um, because they, not, none of them know. The only one that knows is the house of Yahweh. The house of Yahweh is the one that, t- that told you what controls the weather, and it's the micro kingdoms. The, none of the one, no one in the world is really saying this except the occasional scientist, and uh, they're still not getting full support about this. You know, they're still considered to be kind of these oddballs uh, by the scientific community. But uh, Hebrews eleven three. Now, um, and, and this is this is from the, uh, the International Standard Version, but it says, "By the faith we understand that." Um, and I'm just going to read the last part. So that what is seen was made from that which is invisible. Okay, that, that's what it says in these other um, versions. That the things that are seen came into being out of those things which were unseen. Okay, and this is, this is the faith which is the teachings of Israel Hawkins. And what that's saying is, is remember Pastor has always said, this is how Yahweh could create things so quickly because he gives a command to these micro kingdoms and the things which we see are created by the things which we can't see. Remember Pastor keeps emphasizing this fact that these microorganisms are invisible. Okay, so in scripture they're called the things that are unseen. Now, there's other things that are unseen, like certain truths are unseen, but the unseen thing to the world, it's like this uh, man on a harp on a cloud, or, or it's a spirit that floats around and, um, and tries, to, you know, tries to influence different things. But what this is talking about is these, these microorganisms that are so small that you can't see them without a microscope. So Hebrews 11 Three, even that is a prophecy of the work in these last days because it says there's going to be a faith, there's going to be a religion, and that religion is going to tell you how the worlds were formed by the command of Yahweh. And then that, that's what Pastor has told us. How the worlds were formed by the command of Yahweh, and how was that done? It was because the things that are seen are made by the things which are unseen, which respond to voice command. And, and, and we've seen that. We've, we've, we, we, we have iPhones now. You know, back to 100, 200 years ago, or even 20 years ago, the whole idea of this would be kind of sound foolish. But we even have, you know, phones that respond to voice command. And I even saw an article the other day where, where they, they had a whale. And they said that the whale was talking to the divers. And, and, they, and they, 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 at first they thought they were crazy, but the diver would go down in the tank with this whale, and he'd hear a, another person on the surface saying, come up, come up to the top, or something like that. And then they realized it was the whale saying that. And the whale was actually telling, he was getting a kick out of making the diver go back up to the surface of the water. And, and he had developed the ability to actually uh, vocalize human sounds, and he sounded like, he, like the voice would going through water, because that's the way the whale was hearing it. And uh, they had to go back over these tapes because they didn't believe it, and they, they ended up, I didn't actually hear the tapes, but they ended up uh, proving scientifically that this was actually what was occurring. This whale was learning how to talk. And, and even these little things, like the CPS, you know, being proven to be liars, you know, professional perjurers, according to, uh, according to this, aff- this uh, arrest warrant, which is an affidavit, by the way. This, this police officer actually swore to get this thing done. He, he swore under oath that this woman lied to him. And, and so th- this, is, this is where we're getting this. It's right in the uh, paper itself, and it's actually a document that the police have actually issued, and it's online. So this is what I'm, I'm getting it from, is uh, right online. But th- th- it's the same thing. Everything that Pastor has said is going to be proven true. And right now we're kind of seeing these fairly minor things compared to what we're going to see. It's like the saying, you, you ain't seen nothing yet. Now let, let's go to uh, verse uh, 44 in um, the book of Israel. It says, Yeshua is the one who's doing it. You're the one that's resisting the rope that he ties you with. The rope is the word of Yahweh that proceeds forth from the mouth of the seventh Malak, the seventh messenger, and he speaks in these last days. The seventh messenger is in the last days. That's what Yeshua shows you. you that's a very important verse right there. I'm going to take that and I'm going to make it, uh, I'll frame it in my house because this, the, the pastor is making a very specific statement here. And it's like, I don't know how many people have... Um, made puzzles. But when we were children, we grew up and we made puzzles because they didn't have video games. We made puzzles and different things like this. But 
when you're making a puzzle, you've got all these pieces, and what you'll do is, you'll, you'll, to put the puzzle together, you'll look for the easy pieces first, like the corners, you know, and then you'll look for the sides, and you'll put all the puzzle pieces together. And this is what Pastor is giving us. He's kind of showing us where these puzzle pieces go. And a lot of times he'll give us a puzzle piece, and I think most people don't even know he just gave us a puzzle piece. And in and, and this verse, he's given us a, a corner for the puzzle. You know, it, it's, a, it's a piece, it's, it's like Yachanan 663, where it talks about um, the words of my, uh, uh, where is that? Let me, let me I don't misquote it. But it's Yachanan 663. If someone knows the page, tell me. Uh, only got a few minutes here. But in, in other words, the words I speak to you, they are life and, and they are spirit okay and, and this is this is what verse 44 is doing is it's um it's giving us a a corner piece in the puzzle it's a it's like in um elementary school i remember we were we were learning i was like in the fourth grade and we were going through our our times tables i don't know if i mentioned this before but in and, and, we're, and we're going the class teachers saying now what's two plus two or two times two what does two times two equal and we go two times two equals four and Three times three equals nine, and five times five equals twenty-five. And at the end, he looks at us, and we're sitting there, and we're, we're like nine years old, and he says, "What does equals mean?" And we we're all like, "Look, we have no idea what equals meant. We're just reciting this stuff after him, and we're just learning this stuff by rope. We didn't even know what equals meant." And he got angry. And, I mean, he really got angry. His face got red, and he started yelling at us for not knowing what equals meant. And um, and then he said, "Equals means the same as." And it was like a light bulb went off in my head because it's like, oh, wow, that explains what, what we're doing here. I didn't even know what we were doing with saying 2 plus 2 equals 4. I don't, I don't know what that, I, it was just something I was memorizing, but the equals meant the same as. Okay, and, and, and really from that point forward, math was no problem for me at all. And, and this, is, this is what pastor is doing, and he does this a lot. In verse 44, he says, and f- see if you can find the equation in this verse, because there's an equation. He says, the, the rope is the word of Yahweh that proceeds from the mouth of the seventh Malak. Okay, the word is. You could, you could almost cross that out and put an equal sign. Okay, because that's what is is. It's equal. Just like the word are or be. And you can look this up. It's one of the meanings of the word is. It's like even Bill Clinton recognized the significance of the word is. He said, well, what depends on what, what meaning of is is. And you look up is, there's a lot of meanings. But the rope is the word of Yahweh that proceeds forth from the mouth of the seventh Malik. And, and it, it's like a formula, E equals MC squared. And you could say, well, why, if E equals MC squared, why do we need MC squared? Why, do, why can't we just say E? But it's, it's the, the formula itself has more meaning than the two parts. And the, and the rope, what this is doing is it's telling you that the word that proceeds from the mouth of Israel Hawkins is, has a quality to it. And that quality, that attribute, is described by this quality of calling it a rope. Okay, so this is, and, and you know, you got to think of, well, what is that telling me? Okay, because pastor has just given us this equation, and now this, like E equals MC squared, allows physicists to tie two completely separate doctrines of understanding together and make a bigger whole of understanding. This equation, the rope, equals the word of Yahweh that proceeds forth from the mouth of the seventh Malik, should give you a bigger understanding and should allow you to tie the teachings of the rope, the donkey, and Yachanan 663 all together. I, mean, I don't have time to get into that, but that's what this does. This, this is kind of like this physicist call it a grand unified theory. This is kind of what we're coming up with. Um, I know we don't use the word theory, but that's what they call it. And, and this is the, the, so look for that when pastor makes an equivalency. When he's drawing an equivalency by the use of the word is. Now the words I speak to you are, that's another form of the word is. There's a, you can take that and almost cross it out. You don't need to cross it out, but and put an equal sign. Because that's how you understand, um, even more so, the, the teachings of Israel Hawkins. Now let's go real quick now to, I think it's verse 55. We've got a little bit of time here. Verse 55, But you, for you who reverence my name, how do you reverence Yahweh's name? By keeping his laws. The first law is seek first the kingdom. That's the first law. What he's talking about, seek the place where I choose through prophecy to place my name. Go to the one sent. Okay, remember, seek the one sent. Okay, you can take all that out. This is another equal. The kingdom equals the one sent. Seek the place where I choose to go through to prophecy to place my name. Go there to the one sent. 
And then that's where you, the rope is going to take hold of your life. And this is where you're going to learn the keeping of Yahweh's laws. But not only that, you're going to become as the, you know, the donkey. Remember, the donkey has his ears perked up. You're going to become what that rope represents, which is the, um, the, 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 the status that Yeshua Messiah attained before his death of this uh, being a perfect man. So now at this time, would everyone please stand? For the great Kohan Betzael Hawkins. Praise Yahweh for you, great Kohan Zephania. You may be seated. Shalom, brethren. I really appreciated that uh, explanation that the great Kohan just gave us about the importance of this connection. And it, it really, that's a great way to remember this. And it's a great lead-in to where I'd like to start in the next uh, part of this lesson. Uh, we're going to be discussing more uh, about this uh, pattern that Yahweh has established for us to follow. And uh, in thinking about that uh, example with the rope that he just gave, uh, we use ropes to form an attachment or connection to something. And if you were uh, caught up in a flood, for instance, and you were tied by a rope, you know, to a, 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 an oak tree that wouldn't wash away, uh, even if you perished in a flood, your body would still be found, right? They find you, find you tied to, the, to, the, to that rope. And so we have a, a bit of an analogy there. Uh, to our physical existence at this time, that even if in this time period we were to lose our lives uh, through an accident or through circumstances, uh, if we have this connection with Yahweh and he recognizes us, as Yahshua stated many times, how he would recognize those who are his, you still have that connection so that you still have the hope of the resurrection, you still have... Uh, that connection to the kingdom of Yahweh, to the, all the, the righteous character that you developed in your life and, and so forth, and you can be put back together physically, you know, that in a bodily form uh, to then uh, uh, come forth in, in the, the full glory and righteousness that Yahweh has described uh, through that process. And here on page 47, uh, in the 11th book of his, uh, Israel, and uh, we're in part one, page 47, and verse 70. We're in Luke 6, 45, or excuse me, Luke uh, 6 and verse 49. Uh, now remember in verse 45, just to bring us up to date here, a righteous man out of the rich treasure of his heart brings forth what uh, that which is righteous. And... And we see this taught through the peaceful solution where as a man thinks in his mind uh, what he holds near and dear, you know, it's like uh, that connection where you, your thoughts uh, lead to actions and which reinforces what comes forth from the heart, uh, what you value. And this is how Yahweh works uh, with us. In verse 49, but he who hears but does it not is like a man who built his house upon the earth without a foundation. Now, what is a foundation? Uh, typically, we desire it to be a connection, uh, a firm, established connection to the earth. And uh, not always, but typically, I think we, uh, at least I do, think of a foundation as something that's fairly uh, firm, uh, heavy, weighty. Uh, that has a firm attachment uh, to the earth so that when a strong wind blows or a flood, uh, you know, comes through, it uh, is going to remain attached, at least attached to the ground if possible. And so here we have that idea or the concept of a connection, like that rope to tie, to, to tie fast, to hold fast. So... We see here the example of he who hears. And so we hear, and that, that word hear comes with the idea of understanding, and we'll see here in a moment how that understanding is developed. 
So you first you hear the message and the instruction, and then build your foundation by doing. It's what we do. And that foundation will remain, uh, this is my comment, that foundation will remain unless the earth passes away. Now, we recall in Revelation, there's a reference to that, that unless heaven and earth passes away, which pastors explained that not too long ago, that it, it's not going to pass away, that Yahweh has a plan and a purpose. It's the, it's the defilement and the, the sins, the uh, corruption, the, the bitterness, the war, the hatred, all these things that's in the earth right now, that's the things in the earth that's passing away. The defilement of the land, the, the firmament, uh, the sins of the people, you know, these are the things that are going to be passing away, but the earth itself will remain and be purified and cleansed. And so this foundation that we're looking for is one that firmly attaches us to something that is lasting, that Yahweh has, has shown in prophecy that is forever. If one is called today, where were you called to? Now, if you're sitting here because you were called, or the fact is that we wouldn't be sitting here if we weren't called, Yahweh shows this, but turn over to Yachanan 6. He shows you exactly where he calls you to. No ifs, ands, and buts about it. No question. He's very specific. He won't call you to another place. And if you go to another place, it's not Yahweh calling you. It's Satan. It's a deceiver. Or one whom, Yahweh, or whom uh, Satan is in, inspiring or influencing and, and working through in that way. So Yahweh calls, or that is, he reveals himself by extending to you the ability to understand what he's teaching. First a little, and then as you apply yourself, more comes. But Yahweh calls or reveals the, the who there would be in these last days, the what, or the house of Yahweh, the where, uh, here in the east, west of, uh, in the west, east of, uh, uh, west of the original uh, Abilene, uh, all the prophecies regarded, uh, regarding where, when, gives us a time period of his work in these last days. So all these questions are answered for those who have a mind to seek and to find. They, they have to have their, their understanding opened, and that's what Yahweh does. He's established and set that a situation in place to take place in a person or in an individual's life of whom he chooses at this time. Because this is not uh, a, a time of salvation for all mankind. Yahweh's still in the portion of his plan where he's not calling the whole world at this time. But it's only a day when Yahweh offers salvation to those he calls to his house. So with that in mind, we should be able to recognize what a great and awesome privilege it is for us to even be here and to have this knowledge and recognition, uh, because that puts us in a very unique position here. So salvation is offered, but it's not to the, the entire balance of mankind, if you will, to the... It's only a small uh, portion at this time. So in the last days, Yahweh is offering salvation from his house to those he calls to his house. And as we see in Yachanan 6, verse 44, no man can come to me unless the Father who has sent me draws him. So we see a lot of people come and go from the house of Yahweh. And... Some, a, a few remain, uh, statistically or, you know, by the numbers, we see a few remain, but there's many more who want to hold on to their ways, or the ways they learned uh, from their youth. 
In page 48, continuing here with verse, uh, uh, partway through verse 74, if, if everyone who ever came to the house of Yahweh had remained, there'd be many, many more than there are here, be thousands here. But remember, it's, salvation is not being extended to the, the full balance of humanity that's alive at this time. He has a special purpose. Remember, this is a long-range range plan, and we're at a particular stage of that plan. Some that Yahweh did call, but Yahweh said they wouldn't become grounded. There's a, the concept of that attachment or that foundation, the grounding. And Yahshua said that, and he sa- shows you why. Because they won't accept the oil from the last lamp. They won't accept the teachings coming from the one sent. Now, what I've recognized in myself and in others is it takes humility to submit to the correction of the one sense in instruction. And this is something that uh, I know that we all struggle with because it's written in the scriptures that we would, that this is not something easily obtained. In fact, we have to, to consciously and willfully, purposely beat ourselves down, so to speak. We have to humble ourselves with uh, some, some uh, internal uh, effort. You know, it takes some uh, internal fortitude or some, uh, you, you just, I, I don't know how it is for you, but this is the way it is for me, that I, I, I literally you know, mentally have to, um, uh, it's, it's like a mental wrestling match. You know, get yourself in line. Do it now. Be quick to obey. You know, and sometimes it's not quick, so it's an ongoing fight. It, it, an internal battle to reign in the mind, reign in the thoughts, because thoughts lead to, to actions, and so to feelings that lead to actions. So it, it's a continual thing. But the important thing here is to continue to not grow weary in putting forth that effort, and and to remember that Yahweh will judge us for these things. He Yahweh discerns the heart. So you, we, we owe it to ourselves and to others, of course, but certainly to Yahweh to really continually show that effort. Even if others don't see it, you need to know within yourself that you're putting forth continual effort in overcoming. And to be honest with yourself if you fall short, to get yourself into confession and to lay it all out before the priests and and be accountable to the priests, understanding that we all face these uh, difficulties. Uh, but remember, Yahweh shows mercy to the humble. And so your efforts are not unnoticed. Uh, it may go unnoticed by others, but it's not unnoticed by Yahshua, and it's not unnoticed by Yahweh. So Yahweh sets up this calling or this drawing he gets your attention, you start to understand, and he gives you enough, not to force, but enough that it gets your attention so you show an interest. And you draw near to Yahweh, you come to the feast, you listen. Uh, maybe you didn't want to come up here the first time. Maybe there's something that you saw or something going on you didn't understand and didn't think you wanted to be a part of it, but you thought, no, I, I need to listen to this one that that is, uh, is teaching in these last days. It's teaching in the name of Yahweh. And you came up to the sanctuary and you sat in the, in the lesson and you listened. And you said, yes, all this man is speaking is true. It's here in the scriptures, it's written in it and, it. and it starts agreeing with that spirit of calling. And then we make that determination that I want to be a part of this forever and I want to overcome and I want to be like Yahweh in my character. And so we make that first step of, of um, through baptism and so forth, and begin that uh, that long road to um, recovery, if you will. You know, you think about recovering from 
uh, alcoholism or other, you know, drug abuse or anything like that. They talk about it in terms of a road to recovery. And so this is what we start on so that we can be recovered from the mouth of the lion, so we can be recovered from sin and death and uh, be restored on the right path, the path of righteousness. In verse 76, verse 45, once again, it is written in the prophets. This is where our authority uh, is found here in the scriptures. It's written by the prophets. So that, but unless we had a teacher, we wouldn't understand it. Because many of us, you know, read these things. We had a Bible, you know, we read it. We didn't understand it. How can I understand lest I have a teacher? Because there are secrets that have been hidden so that not everyone, remember, it's not a day of salvation for all people, but for those Yahweh calls. So Yahweh sets this ability in some to understand to a point, and they start drawing near to Yahweh, and they all will be taught by Yahweh. And we showed, uh, as the Koan just showed here back in uh uh, verse 44, we see that rope uh, being equal to the word of Yahweh that proceeds forth from the mouth of the seventh Malik. Now notice, they will all be t- taught by Yahweh. Therefore, everyone who has heard the Father has learned from him comes to me. So you see here, he, he is taught by or from a teacher. In verse 77, let's go over to Isaiah 54. It's not always apparent, but if you just notice what is prophesied, first, you need to study House of Yahweh literature that comes from Yahweh. It guides you in the scriptures. And it guides you in the truth to this perfection. Uh, to this perfection, and if you're busy doing that, the Spirit of Yahweh calls you with that same power that comes from Yahweh electronically is shown in the Scriptures, or as it's shown in the Scriptures, that it draws you to His house, and that will continue if we are, remain steadfast in seeking Yahweh through this diligent prayer and study. And as the scientists show, our thoughts and activities in our body, the things that go on in our body are electronically based. Very subtle, uh, but, you know, electronic simply refers to the actions of the electrons. Remember, they move around and they form different substances of uh, the creation, things that we're made of. And they can be moved around in various ways. Uh, to form different substances and in different mixtures and compounds and things that uh, produce different results. And as some of you have experienced, when you get the right combination of these things in your body, it makes a big difference. You know, all of a sudden you're alert or you're, uh, you are more restful, uh, you are more at peace in your body. But there's also uh, something here that is difficult to comprehend or explain. Pastors put it in terms of electronic because it was the closest thing he could think of that you can see the effect of it. Uh, you know that it's performing work or doing something. It's having an influence, but you can't really see it. You just know that its influence is there. And it. the, the way I like to look at it is it's, it's from the same author. You know, it's like looking at the, the creation of Yahweh. Whether you look at something on uh, earth, under the sea, or in the firmament, or on another planet, like they're showing us pictures from the moon or from Mars, you see things in common. And the way I look at that is, well, of course, it's, it's, it's created by the same creator. And he has a pattern that he follows, and so you're going to see that pattern in his creation. And so we see these similarities. We see that there is something that works with that righteous uh, part of us, that desire 
to obey Yahweh, that desire to be righteous, that part in us. It's something that influences and works with that and then starts to increase one's understanding if you don't resist it. Because once you resist it, you cut yourself off or you turn the light off, you turn the switch off from the golden oil. You're sitting there listening, but you're not hearing what I say. This is what Yahshua said. And he said, the reason you don't understand me is because you can't hear what I'm saying. That word here, you know, just a quick reference in Strong's, it's the, in the Greek uh, word 191, comes with the idea of under, to understand uh, the meaning or the message. And so they can't understand what he means or the message behind or within what he's saying because this block, uh, it, there, it's not being illuminated. It's not, uh, it's just like he said, you shut off the light. It's like sitting in a room, uh, a closed dark room with a light on. You can see everything. Once you turn the light off, nothing's apparent to you. It's like, well, I know I'm in a room, but nothing has any meaning. It's just, there could be noise in that room, there could be all kinds of things going on, but if you don't see it, you know, you don't know the meaning of it. It's like hearing a sound and not knowing what the sound is, not recognizing it. Because, uh, you know, the, you can start going with your imagination here with the, the light, the light of Yahweh, uh, on and on uh, what it, with what it takes to illuminate a person's understanding. And Pastor knows this is the case because he put this to the test and asked someone, you know, what what was meant here in this sermon, you know, or asked, uh, what, what do you uh, think this means? And And then you hear the excuses, well, I didn't hear that part. I must have been distracted. Well, this is what we all get distracted. And, and, it, and if you don't get it the first time, you know, that's, that's no uh, dishonor to you unless you never go back and try to seek what you missed. You know, we need to go back and hear those sermons again. We need to be uh, re rehearsing it as we are doing here this evening in the books of Israel. And that needs to be a continual process. And pastor understands that there's more coming out right now than you can ever fully keep up with but we need to show Yahweh the effort. Now remember what he said. They come to me, everyone who Yahweh calls and is working with, they come to me and then they will be made priests in the last days. Well, here's another part of this plan or this process. And we see all throughout history, Yahweh has preserved the work along with the promise of this priesthood. Now he talks about bringing blessings to the whole world, but remember, at, at this stage of Yahweh's plan, He's not extending this calling to the whole world at this time. That comes yet future. The whole world is the multitude of nations. And the, the multitudes are, are not only a select group. The select group is, um, that's a separate unit, okay? And they're going to be used to teach and train the others to bring them in uh, to uh, the Yahweh's ruling kingdom and government under his laws, his perfect government and justice. So this is the work that Yahweh has prophesied that he would build one step at a time. Now, we're the last step that brings us to the priesthood that was promised and the blessings. And the blessings are not the wealth or the gold and silver and those types of things. It's much greater than that. Now, in Isaiah 54, verse 13, remember as Yahweh is drawing these people, and listen to this wonderful promise here. All your children will be taught by Yahweh. 
that was the scripture he was teaching. All your children will be taught by Yahweh. The great will and uh, and great will be the peace of your children. So to produce this being taught by Yahweh, the result would be peace in your children. So what would it take to produce this effect? Something goes between there. If you're going to if they're going to be taught by Yahweh, well, what is that teaching that results in the peace of your children? Well, what do we know today that is promised to bring peace? It's the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program, which teaches peace. You see that? This is being taught by Yahweh. The scripture, he is quoting that he said, it is written by the prophets the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program to all your children. In righteousness, you will be established. Remember the prophecies of in the last days, I will establish my house. And remember, establishing comes with that idea of firmly establishing or setting on a foundation and attaching to uh, something that is permanent and lasting. And this would occur in the last days. Now, before this, he shows in several places that uh, the nation of Israel, that the uh, children of Israel would meet their downfall. They would stumble. They would fall. They wouldn't take a hold of what was being offered. Salvation would be offered, and then they wouldn't accept it. And we see this going on throughout history at various times, uh, even to the point that it's not that they don't accept it. It's not, they don't leave it there. They actually went to the point of these inquisitions, which is like an inquiry. They go and they, it's like being taken before the authorities and questioned. And you think about the situation the person was in there. They would question you according to their understanding. How would you like to be brought before uh, a priest, you know, of the world today and be questioned and condemned according to his understanding? You see the situation, the, the, the position you'd be in? You know, some, uh, a series of events took place this week where um, I occurred to hear a person uh, reading a scripture. I couldn't listen to it because it's, it's like that prophet, you know, who found the man on the, on the uh, cart reading the scripture. And he says, how can I understand if I don't have a teacher? You know, when you hear someone reading the scripture without understanding... You just can't listen to it. It's like, you know, they mention the word righteousness, you know, it's like, stop right there. I have something I need to explain to you about that. You know, and, and they just go on, you know, and it's like, wait, 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 wait. You're missing the whole point. I can't listen to this. <laughs> it's, it's like seeing someone go to their destruction, you know, it's like, wait, you're going to fall in the ditch. Oh, I can't see. I can't look, you know, because you know they're going to go in. You know. Headlong to destruction. Okay. So they wouldn't stop at just not accepting, but they would actually uh, see how they could get rid of this character that was telling them what they were doing wrong. So we see this hatred, this enmity that would well up within uh, many people and cause much destruction at any any hint of righteousness or uh, someone trying to follow Yahweh's laws. And they still want to do that today, but we have the assurance and of Yahweh's prophecies that show that Yahweh is proving his work. He's proving that his way works. So what are we proving individually? What are we showing Yahweh? Remember that effort we put forth is showing Yahweh and Yahshua where our heart is and what our desire is. And pastor is proving what he does and what he preaches through the peace of solution, through the, the laws of Yahweh. Uh, he talks about determining in your mind and how you can start building this idea up in your heart, and then the heart su- part starts supplying your mind with the power to do what you want it to do, what it needs to do. 
And sh- pastor's shown this in, a, in his own life. He's an example of this. Um, how he's practiced self-control. And as the uh, great deacon pointed out last week, how even people in the world recognize a man who teaches these things and has done all that he has done to help others would in no way do the, the uh, awful things that he's accused of doing. It just would not be in the character of a person like that who's done these things to do those things he's accused of. Praise Yahweh. So Yahweh is taking care of the house of Yahweh. He's fully aware of what his house is doing and giving it guidance. And uh, we have experienced Yahweh's protection at his feast. We experience the peace that uh, Yahweh provides us, uh, even though the threats of the enemies increase. And so we are the beneficiaries, if you will, of the experience and the work that was done by the former works of Yahweh. They've kept up through the, the ages. Whenever Yahweh would have a work done, there would be something they would do to preserve the, the laws, the prophecies, and so forth, like the scriptures we have today to use in t- training and instructing our people. So we need to seek Yahweh continually. When we rise up in the morning, first thing, we need to express our desire to Yahweh that we want to become a blessing. In the morning, you know, we're going to uh, be celebrating the, uh, the daylight period of the Sabbath. We need to express to Yahweh how we would desire to be a blessing to others on the Sabbath. And the effort we put forth in overcoming, being a righteous example to others, ask Yahweh to guide us, to bless our understanding, and then come here on time, be ready to, to listen and ready to learn, and to have that attitude of how may I serve you, or what do you want me to do, Yahweh, and look to the priests for that guidance, and, and of course, in all these things, fear not, because Yahweh is fully aware in guiding his house and uh, caring for his people. And this way you will seek first the kingdom of Yahweh and his righteousness. And uh, your your efforts and and striving will not be in vain. May Yahweh bless your understanding. It's time to uh, continue with the rest of the Sabbath. So rejoice in this evening. We'll see you in the morning. Let's uh, lift up our hands to Yahweh and give him thanks and, and, um, and, and praise on this holy Sabbath. Our great and awesome Father, whose name is Yahweh, this is Kohan Betzil, coming before you with the great men of your house, as the seeds of the last day's witness, Israel Hawkins, and through our high priest, Yahshua Messiah. Father Yahweh, we rejoice in you that you've given us your Sabbath, a time to rest from our own works, that we can uh, come here to be a blessing to others through the diligent listening, through service, through patience, endurance, attending the classes, applying our minds to understanding so that we'll know uh, to give a proper answer in its season, to uh, know how to conduct ourselves according to peace of solution so that we can resolve conflicts, so that we can uh, find the correct answers to uh, challenges and, and difficulties and situations so we can show the proper respect to one another. And this way we create a peaceful environment for ourselves and those around us. And so, Father Yahweh, we thank you for this blessing you've given us in these lessons for uh, the work that you've continued to bless and support in these last days so we can bring forth just what's needed in its appropriate time. And we pray you would continue to bless Pastor, bless him with his health and strength. Remember the great Khan Yadidia who supports us from afar through the, his diligent efforts and his example in, uh, in incarceration. And uh, many uh, throughout the lands uh, incarcerated, those who are held in uh, foreign lands not allowed to come here at this time. We pray you bless and strengthen them, Father Yahweh, that you protect them, knowing that their lives may be in danger in various areas. We pray that you would bless them to rejoice and have peace on this Sabbath, and that it would be a, a, uh, a time of rejoicing for all people, no matter what trials or difficulty we're facing at this time, knowing that you're fully in control and that uh, the time has grown short and your prophecies are coming to pass speedily, and it won't be long now till we uh, enter into that great uh, ruling kingdom and family and government with you, Father Yahweh, when uh, the, the great blessings you promised will be fully poured out upon your people.
people in your kingdom. We look forward to that time and wait eagerly for it. And we do ask and pray these things in the name of Yahshua Messiah, guided by Spirit Holy, we pray. Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh.